COVID-19, a global pandemic that has reached every corner of the world. Struggle after struggle for over a year, people have been trying to combat the virus. Everywhere has their own story with COVID, and so does Davison. This story starts off on a high note after a big election night win for the school district. But the year that followed would be filled with twists and turns, uncertainty and plans that changed on a dime. Information that was true one day would be different by the next, and normal was no longer a concept. Our mission at DTV was to keep the cameras rolling through all of it, documenting the starts, stops, and moments that defined the past 13 months as Davison students, teachers, parents, and staff did their best to confront COVID. The Davison bond proposal is happening today, so make sure to get out and vote. And DTV has you covered, so stay tuned. March 10th marked a new chapter in the city of Davison, Michigan. To start, the city was voting on a $71 million bond to transform its schools, and at the same time, the girls' basketball team was making history. It's regionals week in high school basketball for the girls. Carmen Ainsworth back in the regional semifinals for the third straight year. In 2018, the Cavaliers ended Davison season in this game, and Tuesday night, we'd get a rematch. Davison soared out of the gate. Anna Tomzak feeds Jasmine Hadley for the basket and one. The Cardinals take an eight point lead. As the girls were winning, the Davison Community Schools bond was passed. At this point, Things were really looking great for the city of Davison. Davison stuns Carmen Ainsworth 54 to 49 and is headed to the regional finals for the first time since 2011. I can't even describe my feelings right now. I'm just so excited and uh, everyone on my team is just working so hard and we've been working so well as a team together and I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. And for these kids, these players, these seniors, so happy for them. At the time, COVID-19 was just a background thought for many. Thank you, Davison, for helping us pass our, our 2020 bond. We're going to do great things in this district. Um, I want to make sure that everybody understands that um, right now there has been no recommendation by the County Health Department, by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, by the Michigan Department of Education uh, to close schools. Davison was riding its highs before COVID slammed on the brakes. The girls basketball team was waiting for the bus that would take them to the regional finals when it happened. Earlier today, the MHSAA has made the very difficult decision to suspend all of our winter tournament events effective immediately. I just, I didn't want to believe it at first. I didn't even think it was true when I first heard it. I was like, there's no way this is canceled. There's no way. And it just, I don't know, became real. And my first thought was just, how could this happen? Why did it happen to us? Like, we've been working so hard and just why? Try to understand that they're making the best decision they can. Uh, it, it stinks for, for us and our players and our seniors uh, right now, but again, it's just a suspension. Uh, it's not officially canceled and we're just hoping for the best. This is a true and real public health crisis at the time and we need to do what we can to help slow and mitigate the spread of this virus. And then the dominoes started falling. As of right now, there are 12 presumptive positive cases in Michigan. We had two yesterday. In an abundance of caution, I am ordering the closure of all K-12 school buildings in Michigan for three weeks, starting Monday, March 16th, until Sunday, April 5th. Hey guys, this is Drew Ritter from DTV News, and this is our third day of the COVID-19 coverage, and the day after we all woke up to the news that day was on high school would be closing down for the next few weeks. And I mean, what can I say? This is absolutely crazy. I never expected anything like this to happen during my time at Davison, but I mean, here we are. Boy, how things change. Um, just over a week ago, actually eight days ago, uh, I was sitting here in the DTV studio, um, thanking everyone in the community for passing our bond uh, and informing you that at that time, the uh, Genesee County Health Department was not uh, recommending the closure of schools. Um, hours, literally hours after that, uh, Governor Whitmer decided to close all schools statewide. After days of confusion, the once lively hallways of Davidson Community Schools would become dark, empty buildings. When quarantine started, nobody really knew how the virus would spread, how it affected people, or who had it. Elements of panic spread as store shelves turned empty, 
businesses closed, and households were locked down. I know when you go to the store, it's not just toilet paper that's missing anymore. It's water bottles, it's diapers, it's even canned food. People are really starting to prepare, and I think that school closings have really elevated what is going on right now, and people are even more scared than they were yesterday. As the virus spread danger across Michigan, it also spread more information through the news and pop culture. It seemed like every day brought new cases and closures. I saw this interview earlier with this basketball player, Donovan Mitchell, and he said that he was asymptomatic when he had it. Like if he was walking around the street, on the streets, no one would know he had it. So basically just kind of a reminder that even if you don't think you have it, you might have it, you never know. As time slowly crawled, people were searching for ways to stay busy and keep in contact with their family and friends. I was FaceTiming a lot of my friends. FaceTime became my new best friend, I guess, because I would FaceTime my friends, I'd FaceTime my aunts, my uncles, um, any of my far distance relatives, just to try to get in contact with them and make sure they were safe and okay. April 3rd, after the three week shutdown, it was still not safe for kids to come back to school. Governor Whitmer uh, held a press conference in which she spoke about her newest executive order. That order basically closes schools for the remainder of this school year. And for the first time ever, students and staff would have to abruptly pivot from a face-to-face -face schooling to an entirely new online system. As you know, the district has been providing uh, educational resources and learning activities and opportunities for our students, but we hadn't really provided any real instruction. That's all going to change. Uh, last week when we, when we started to hear rumors that the governor was going to cancel school for the remainder of the year, um, I gathered my administrative team and we started working on developing a plan in order to, uh, to create a distance learning framework. Cases were growing rapidly with 1,179 confirmed cases on that day. In order to help the students deal with the quick online transition, the district took a no harm grading approach. Students who needed to could improve their grade, but grades would not drop due to online classes. This did help a lot of students, but also tuned a lot of others out. Trying to teach everybody was difficult. You know, you have, say even you have 10% of your kids that have a question, right? Now you got 10 or 12 kids that you have to reach out to individually. Um, so that's a difficult thing to do where you can just present in front of a class. Um, it's a big difference. In only six weeks since the first confirmed case, there was now over 44,000 cases and 4,000 deaths. This mix of dullness and hysteria would last through the rest of the school year. The redistribution of nearly 5,000 Chromebooks, that project is the single biggest thing that this department's ever done on its own. Like, we have to tear them all apart. The scale of that is, is gargantuan. We've had to put on our blinders and really focus on this, and we are drowning in Chromebooks. I wish we had a time lapse of, uh, of what we've done in this room. It's an endeavor. Uh, it's been go, 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 go. With the chaos of COVID reaching its climax, the Davidson Tech Department was rushing behind the scenes to meet a seemingly impossible deadline. The process of gathering every Chromebook from every classroom in the district, enrolling and redistributing them out to every Davidson school was grueling. But as soon as they got all of the Chromebooks back out to the students, they began to flood back in. But because of the, just the sheer quantity of broken Chromebooks or students with issues or the amount I've had to prep uh, to get ready for entire buildings worth of students, it's, it's, gotten, it's gotten kind of delayed. Like, I haven't been able to get to those tickets as fast. With school back in session, crunch time continued. A task that would usually take a year of planning was being shortened down to only a few weeks. We didn't know we were going to be handling this many devices um, at that personal of a level, you know, in, in, with immediate turnaround being necessary. So we set up a desk out here and we, you know, prep enough Chromebooks basically to get through the day. So, you know, you look at the next challenge, you, you, you solve that problem, you get that next thing done, 
and then you go to the next thing. I've got a list of stuff over the next few weeks that we have to do on our whiteboard behind you there. You know, you just you cross one thing off the list and you move on to the next. You can't focus too much on the overall project or it'll just, you'll want to cry. The tech department took on the mantra that would be echoed throughout the entire district. And it's just a matter of, all right, what needs to be done? And then we do it. Not getting it done is not an option. While everyone was finding ways to safely pass the time, seniors still held their hope for a normal way to end the school year. I have spent all day yesterday and today finishing my prom dress, and all I have to do is add the zipper to the bottom and fix some of the things on the top. The arms are a little too tight, but this is what it looks like. But I am so excited because I finished it. Yay! That's literally all that I have for today. I know. Um, this is getting really crazy. The coronavirus is spreading obnoxiously and um, honestly all we can do is stay home and wash our hands. Washing our hands and lockdown wasn't enough. Students just received some of the worst news they had gotten all year. Our schools were going fully online. This left everyone in shock and seniors waiting for a way to have a regular graduation through all of the chaos. I know when I heard this, my first reaction as I am a senior was, well, what about graduation? How is this going to affect me when I graduate? As you know, we've been weighing all of our options for graduation. Um, and while I have not yet given up hope that we can actually have a graduation ceremony, possibly an open air ceremony at Cardinal Stadium, with social distancing and limited uh, participation and attendance um, and masks and that kind of thing, uh, with each passing day, it, it, the, the chances of that happening seem to be diminishing. As regulations and case numbers constantly changed throughout May and June, the school's plan to give seniors a nice send-off kept changing along with it. They started with the idea for seniors to drive by inside of their cars to fit the current limitations set by COVID. And as a backup in case that plan failed, they made a video to be played in place of graduation. You've lived through the unthinkable and you will make it through whatever comes next and anything life throws your way. And while it may look a little different than you pictured, from today forward, this is your life, this is your world, and this is your moment. You are the class of 2020 and you can do anything. Soon a light at the end of the tunnel appeared and restrictions were lightened allowing the school to hold an outdoor graduation with a small crowd, but both seniors and parents felt that it wasn't enough. That light soon faded as the possibility of a normal graduation went with it. Best of luck, class of 2020. I know you will make yourselves in Davison very proud. Thank you, and I love you all. It was extremely important, I think, to our seniors, to our parents, to me, to our, our, our high school principal. We really wanted to be able to provide them um, the graduation that they deserved. Um, unfortunately, we never, we never were. I mean, that, that's the reality. The class of 2020 left us with an unfinished ending. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined um, what, what this would be like or, or, or even that something like this could happen. After months of the unthinkable, fall was arriving and uncertainty buzzed in the air. Could schools open? Should they open? And would it be safe? The state of Michigan created a return to school roadmap in June for districts to adhere to in order to reopen. What I didn't want to happen was rush to open school and have it go south. You know, we want to make sure that when we are opening school, we're ready, that we're doing it safely, that we're going to have a successful reopening um, because failure is not an option. With the new COVID safety guidelines, Davison had to take the usual school year plan, throw it out the window and rebuild it all from scratch. And so many things needed reworking in a hurry. Usually scheduling for middle and high schoolers takes months. Now they had to condense thousands of schedules into mere weeks, rerouting how exactly online is going to work, how students were going to get their lunch, figuring out how buses were going to be scheduled and even hiring additional staff 
to help clean and sub for the normal teachers. Administrators, counselors, and staff worked long exhausting hours in order to get a plan set in stone for the revamped school year. Dealing with the unknown and adapting to all of the changes that have taken place over the last five months. No, it's not over, and, and who knows when it will be over. One after the other problems arose. Hundreds of emails flooded inboxes and opinions and complaints came from others in the community. It was impossible to make everyone happy. People are all over the board. I mean, it, it's, everybody has their own perception, their own perspective, and their own opinion. So, you know, some people are, um, are way over here on this end of the spectrum, and some people are way over here on this end of the spectrum, and everywhere in between. So, to get it right, Davison pushed back the normal start date from August 17th to September 8th. From the beginning, it was clear that Superintendent Kevin Brown's mission was to get the students back to face-to-face. -to -face. But the challenge was to maximize learning and also minimize the risk. I've been a, a strong and rather outspoken advocate for getting kids back in school. I, I know the virus is, is real. I know it's very dangerous. I know it's caused a lot of sickness and death. But I also know it, it doesn't impact kids as, as much as it does older adults and people with underlying conditions. And I'm also very aware of the other negative influences and impacts of not having school. With this in mind, the Davidson administration was ready to start up schools with their own plan, starting with the district giving parents and guardians a choice to send their kids in person or online. The new online hours made it so that schools could eliminate the lunch period completely and so there was a shorter time of exposure for everyone. There's no way we could open the four lines right now and socially distance, so we can't set up the tables down here because there's no way to social distance you. Cleaning, quarantining, and distancing were all major parts to get the school open safely. Because I do think it plays an important role in helping students stay safe, staying safe, and, and keeping that environment uh, clean and safe for everybody. And now it was time to see if all the new plans would actually work. As the sun rose on the first day of school, Elementary buses battled in the rain, and Custo Joe was getting the halls of the first school ready for the students at Hill. Must be the first day of school. I'm looking for my keys, my light keys. Miss Richards and Miss Halverson, Good welcome morning. back to school. How are you? How are you? As Joe finished the preparations for students so to arrive, the Hill principal was waiting eagerly for the students to start rolling in. We are really excited to be back to school. Uh, we're ready for this, and um, we're just, you know, we've got about 20 minutes before our start, the students start rolling in, so we're, we're just ready to welcome everybody back. As a district, we're ready. Uh, the preparations, the, uh, the administration's been there with us all the way. It, no, I don't, not a, no fear at all for me. I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it, embracing it. Yeah, a little nervous, not know how it's going to all go, don't know what, how other people are going to feel. But I think if the parents have them registered uh, to be on site, they're probably ready to. So. And at 8.05 on September 8th, the first Davison students returned to school. Good morning. Good morning. After a few hours, the high schoolers got ready too, later than usual and with mixed emotions. I feel like I'm ready for today, yeah. Doesn't I'm a little nervous, but I'm pretty excited to go back. Getting more sleep and seeing your friends again is a teenager's dream. It definitely feels different. It feels nicer to wake up a lot later, for sure. Changes were evident quickly. Even at the bus stop with social distancing happening, putting on hand sanitizer before getting on the bus, and getting assigned seats once you are on it. As high schoolers entered the building, many were holding their breath just to see how this year would go. It was excitement, I was excited to get back, I was, I was excited to see the kids, but also some nervousness about the online piece, of course, you know, what is it going to look like? I didn't really know what to expect, uh, and coming back to school the first day, Morning. it seems like the students didn't know what to expect okay. either. Well, you have uh, feelings of excitement, but you also have feelings of nervousness, and again, it's the element of the unknown. A fear that stems from the drastic changes since the last time students entered the school. 
Yeah, it was different because, I mean, this was the longest period of time that we had gone, six months, really almost six months, without having a classroom of kids. And early on in the first day, things went really smooth. I think it went fine. I mean, I'm a virtual student, so, but I heard from all of my teachers and I got all my homework done. We got signs posted in the hallway to always walk on the right. We have foam in, foam out of every single classroom. You got the teachers that are disinfecting the desks between every single class and the kids are really waiting patiently out in the hallways for them to do that. One of the things that's changed this year is that they've hired a young lady. Um, she's a former Davison student and her job is simply to go around the building and continuously sanitize things. People showed up on time and they left when they were supposed to and I mean like I said we've had very few behavioral issues. But there were some challenges that teachers had to face. I am in a pretty unique situation where I only have one face-to-face -face class. So with that one class, um, it's not a problem for me to be able to sanitize before and after because I have the time to be able to do that. Um, the other teachers have to do that during the passing time. Still challenging to work out some of the kinks. As far as communicating with them, things have gone all right through Google Classroom. I've made a couple videos that have really helped uh, the kids log on to Google Classroom and remind and um, we're still trying to work out some of the kinks with uploading work, right? If they're going to turn in some homework assignments, they got to take pictures or print it out and take a picture and then upload that and turn it into Google Classroom. So it's going to take some getting used to over the next couple of weeks, but um, I think we're heading in the right direction, that's for sure. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Good to see you. <laughs> Students and staff still pushed through despite all of these changes. We're painting the train as it's, as it's moving. Uh, we really don't know always what the next day will bring, but we promise we will make the best out of every moment. And students will take the cues from the teacher. If the teacher is solid, students will follow. Teacher shaky, students will be shaky. The first day also brought not only a sense of completion and relief, but also some of concerns. COVID is still a serious thing. It's not going away. It's very important that we do keep the safety precautions, you know, in check and make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to. You're socially distanced and you're wearing a mask and you're putting on hand sanitizer and you're being careful. So that way we can continue to come to school and experience this every day, something that we missed out on for six months. I know that the fall and winter are gonna be difficult, especially with the flu season. You know, the symptoms of the flu are similar to the symptoms of COVID. Uh, so do you have the flu or do you have COVID? I think that's gonna be a difficult um, discernation to make. After everything that happened since March, Davidson just completed the first major step of getting students and staff back in school. Felt normal again, despite the fact that we were ha all had masks on, um, but it was a next step towards being normal and normalcy. I'm glad that we are here, right? You think of other districts around nearby in Genesee County, Grand Blanc, Flint, Atherton, and some others that are completely online from day one. And I'm so thankful for at least the time that we have, however long this might be. It might be a month, it might be until June that we are here in this environment interacting, social interaction is really important for people, including me. Um, and I'm glad that we're here um, for X number of days. COVID-19 has added another dimension to education this school year, along with your typical face-to-face -face learning. Hundreds of students across Davidson opted to take school online to start the year, while face-to-face -face students still have two online classes regardless. And the addition of this method posed a new challenge for many. I mean, I kind of saw it coming. I was bracing for impact and, you know, 
I was ready to do online school. I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't, you know, prepared in that aspect, but I got through it. John Fedenko is just one of many students who's adapted to online learning. He is doing face-to-face -face learning, but still has two online classes to complete daily, while virtual students are still doing all six classes online. This is how the 2020-2021 school year got started, but it is not the first time COVID affected a student's learning. When everything kind of broke down that Friday and we got the news, I was a little excited, you know, two week period off, who cared? And then it kind of evolved in this thing into this whole online schooling program. And that really took a toll on me. Initially, the tentative remote learning program put into place during the shutdown worked so that there was no penalty for uncompleted work and that the students' grades could only improve. The program for the new school year, however, provides a much more complete curriculum, but has proved more difficult as well. Teachers like Mr. Wilcox have been right there with students like John in terms of adjusting to the new online style. With this new mode of learning, everyone has been forced to adapt. Most of the problem for us as teachers was the technology, right? And we had different platforms that we were trying to use and Zoom was just starting to come around. We're starting to learn that. Do we use Zoom with our students and teach over Zoom with our kids? Do all of our kids that want to participate have um, strong enough Wi-Fi in order um, in order to learn. Parents of these students have had the tough decision to either send their children to school or keep them home. Courtney, a parent of four, has a child with a medical condition that forces all of her kids to go online. My youngest child has asthma. She's been hospitalized multiple times throughout her life. She's, um, she's going into the fourth grade and I can't risk her getting sick. I can't risk any of my other children getting sick and bringing it home to her, I, I knew right away that online was the option I was going to choose. Also, the tech department has had a bigger workload over this pandemic. Chromebooks, power supplies, and hotspots, you name it, they were buying. Planning, I think, has been the hardest thing to do. The fact that we only had three weeks to do all this is like, it's a little overwhelming because, I mean, there's over 5,000 devices that we have to get our hands on, organize, and then distribute. Even with the same teachers and the same students, the screen between the two is an obstacle no one envisioned having to deal with. It was a very difficult transition to make, um, and there were a lot of issues and problems with making that transition. Um, hopefully, if we have to do that in the future, it will be much better. These times have been tough on everyone, but John has some words of advice to anyone who needs it. You have to persevere and you have to stay focused and maintain that perseverance, that strength to get through everything because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. By the time August rolled around, fall sports were upon us and it had been five months since athletes across the state of Michigan had practiced or played in sports of any kind. There were still questions looming about if students should even be in school for the fall, let alone playing sports. As the debate raged on about if students would play high school sports when school began, major colleges across Michigan complicated things. Every college football team across Michigan decided to not suit up for the fall season. But the MHSAA was still pushing to have fall sports on time. The governor, however, wanted them to consider other plans. Uh, I'm also calling on the Michigan High School Athletic Association to consider postponing fall sports that have um, the impossibility of social distancing as a part of them, consider moving those to the spring and running some of the more individualized sports like track and field or tennis or golf to the fall. The MHSAA agreed and delayed sports until the spring. While all the changes and debates were going on, student athletes were caught up in the middle of all the starts and stops, which began to take their toll. Hey, you know, it was very disheartening. They had uh, uh, worked really hard all summer and, um, you know, we got to practice for uh, four and a half days and then they, they shut us down on that Friday. So obviously that was not a, not a good day for anybody, you know, coaches, players, parents, community. Um, so yep, just not a, not a good day. In early September, MHSAA had a change of heart and decided to work out a plan to start football in the fall. Hi Cardinal fans, welcome to Davison, Michigan, and it's finally here. The 2020 season kicking off on a Friday night, September 18th, 2020. The new students were thrilled to be playing, even with all the changes. The season was shortened to six games and athletes were only allowed two people at the stands. And masks were a part of helmets too. Now, this year has brought a lot of changes, including a plastic shield that is now attached to our football players' helmets. I spoke with a few players, and they all love that they are able to play because they have the plastic shield. 
This season was especially trying for the Davidson football team as they fought not only COVID but also to defend their state championship. The team started off hot, they were undefeated in the playoffs, and then... Today, the Department of Health and Human Services is issuing an epidemic order to help us slow the spread of COVID-19 and save lives. The order takes effect on Wednesday at 12.01 a.m. and will be in effect for three weeks. You guessed it. Another statewide shutdown for schools and another stop to the football season. It would be two months until players all across Michigan would step foot onto the field. But before they played, every player had to be tested twice a week in order to play. And for the first time, MHSAA football would be played in the wintry month of January. The defending state champs, the Davidson Cardinals, would go back to Ford Field, but with a much different atmosphere from last year to this year during COVID. After football, winter sports in Michigan were still being delayed because of COVID which prompted a protest that some Davison athletes went to in Lansing on January 30th. It was kind of, I just, I wanted to show up and show that, I guess, it's, you can't just cancel a sport. You're just, you're kind of shutting down the person's life. Some people rely on sports for scholarships for college. Other people use it as a way just to deal with their problems. And I just felt it was important that I be there just to show a number of people that cared. Winter sports were reinstated, but during these times of the unknown, athletes and coaches have learned anything can happen. High school sports can be canceled in the blink of an eye. Teams have to be flexible in preparation for whatever life may throw at them. After months of darkness in Davison, a special announcement about homecoming became a beacon of hope for all. Now, Mr. Beamer, we're going to have more people in the stands next week due to tickets. Can you talk a little bit about the ticket situation for next week? Yeah, yep. So so we're lucky to be able to open the stadium up a little bit more. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean we're going to be able to let our, our Davis and May community members in here uh, like we'd like to. But uh, it is awesome that we're going to be able to let more of our student performance groups come in, like marching band, palm dance, as well as their parents. Um, we're going to be able to get, get about 1,000 people in here, which is awesome for, for our kids. Um, and we always think kids first anyways. Fans were going to be in the stands. Tickets were being sold. The band and dance teams were going to be performing live for the first time. And restaurants downtown were opening up so students could have a semi-proper homecoming meal. The king and queen were going to be crowned and it looked like students were going to get back to a bit of normalcy. But then... Oh. Homecoming game has been canceled for tonight. The Cardinals were all set to take on the Hawks, but Wednesday night it, came, it was announced that the Saginaw Heritage football teams were under quarantine after one of their players came in close contact with someone who has COVID. And COVID once again robbed the Davidson community of any normalcy. I found out about the game being canceled through the email Jacob sent out. Um, obviously, I was kind of upset about it because that's the one thing a lot of us were looking to forward to, especially the seniors, like with it being the only thing that we really got. Um, but obviously, we have to make do with what we have, so we still have the parade going on, so that should still be fun. We just want to play, especially with homecoming and senior night for the seniors and stuff. It was a tough, it was a tough break for us. I, I don't know if we've ever had a homecoming without a homecoming football game. So after all the hype for the fans in the stands and a normal homecoming, the school offered to refund everyone's tickets. The community is a big part of our district. And I was really fearful that, you know, people after we had sold almost a thousand tickets that people would want the refunds. And uh, we found out people didn't want to, that they still want to participate in our home acti homecoming activities. And, and uh, that makes me very proud. But like everything else during COVID, Davidson students and staff made the most out of the situation. Without the traditional homecoming game, the students and administration decided the next best thing was to have all of the other normal events happen without football. So the team walked in the parade, the seniors walked with their parents, the band rocked out, the dance and pom-pom team dominated, and the king and queen were crowned. Even with COVID trying to pull the curtains, the show still played on. Parker Arnold. We are here because of the work that we have done and because we have worn masks and we pushed our numbers down but they are very concerning right now. Cases were piling up, and for the superintendent, the single most important job is the safety and well-being of their students. I have been very outspoken and adamant about the importance 
of kids being in school. Davison tried everything they could to keep cases manageable for the sake of staff and students who needed that face-to-face -face interaction. This included pulling anyone out when they were potentially exposed to COVID-19. It's like really embarrassing and it's stressful. It's just like, I promise I don't have COVID. It's tough when you tell these students that they can't come to school for 10 days, 14 days, whatever their uh, quarantine time is. On top of that, the students that were quarantined had to deal with another set of challenges. You're stuck in a room by yourself basically just doing your work and then doing nothing else. Like, because I couldn't go to dance, I couldn't go to pretty much anything else in my life. I do see it on the faces of, uh, you know, my coworkers. I see that they're tired and, and worried, and I, I worry for the students. You know, everybody, everybody deals with this in a, in a different way. You worry for those, those kids that, that test positive, and you hope that they pull through it okay. Wow. Plus, the time it took to monitor cases became a big part of what was already a demanding job for head faculty. There was a two-week stretch when it got pretty pretty crazy that that was, it felt like that was all that we were doing. With cases on the rise, Governor Whitmer announced on November 15th a three-week school shutdown for the state to prepare for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday and to hopefully slow the spread. Still, many families were looking forward to seeing each other in person, regardless of restrictions. As hard as it is not seeing them this Thanksgiving, imagine how much harder it would be if you weren't able to see them for a future holiday ever again. Others decided to play it safe for themselves and for their families. I still went with some of my family, but a lot of people didn't go there because they're either immunocompromised or older and more susceptible in case anything did happen and someone at our party did have it, but it was a lot less people, but we still tried to celebrate any way that we could. Three days after the governor's announcement, on November 18th, COVID-19 cases had risen over 20,000. Schools were given the choice during this shutdown to keep K through eight students face to face, but all high schools were closed and had to do virtual learning. I made the very difficult decision to shut down all of our schools, pre-K through 12th grade, beginning on Wednesday, with the hopes of resuming face-to-face -face instruction on December 9th. One of the differences between this shutdown and the first was that students were responsible for logging in and doing their schoolwork and grades would actually count. Even though we had been through this once before, there was still confusion from both teachers, parents, and students. And I don't really know how I'm feeling just yet. Adjusting is uh, pretty weird. Today, teachers didn't really seem like they knew quite how to uh, set up everything, but tomorrow, uh, I think Zoom meetings will finally begin. On Monday, Governor Gretchen Whitmer announced that the shutdown, originally set to be lifted on December 8th, had been extended for 12 days. After three weeks of doing virtual school, Davison decided our K-8 through students would be back in the classroom. But high school students had to remain at home, and once again, their shutdown was extended until January 4th, totaling 47 days of not stepping foot into the school, an extra month after the original shutdown date. The new year began, and high schoolers were welcomed back. COVID cases totaled over half a million with 13,000 deaths. But as spring approached, Davison would be in for a wild ride full of hope and fear. Pre-COVID was definitely not the greatest, but I would say that it was better than I am now. Along with COVID, there is another pandemic lurking in the shadows that has taken hold especially among students. And the whole part about being unknown basically means that when you have anxiety, you want to rip out your hair and stop moving because you are so paralyzed with fear. And for students like Teresa and Maddie, this anxiety and stress can pile up and push them further towards their breaking point. I really just wanted to not be here anymore. I wanted to just... I... Ooh. I really wanted to, to be frank, I wanted to commit suicide. I wanted it to, to be all over. I wanted to not feel the pain anymore, the like mental anguish and just like distraught that I was feeling. I had a very negative outlook on life and I didn't see it getting better anytime soon and I just wanted to end it all. Students were ripped of every shred of normalcy 
unable to visit friends and family and barred from participating in school events. The majority of kids that we've maybe been getting, especially in the last six to eight months, our kids that are just this is they're struggling. Their anxiety is through the roof. Kyle Powell is a counselor at Oakland Psychological Clinic, and demand for sessions from her and her colleagues have skyrocketed. We're finding those of us therapists who are still seeing clients face to face are extremely busy. Teenagers, middle schoolers, elementary schoolers, telehealth is just a little more challenging sometimes. And adding to the already piling stress, students were given the task of learning partially, if not fully, online. I don't like online school. It is not my favorite. I have a really hard time not being able to talk with a teacher privately and have like an immediate response. Guidance counselor Noelle Cole, like many other staff, have noticed students struggling. I think it's difficult to be an online student. Um, Davison doesn't have an entirely structured day for our students, so sometimes our online students are suffering a lot of structure. Staff can see the changes in their students as the stress from the virus becomes overwhelming. We've noticed our students are a little bit more quiet, a little more reserved, and certainly not as involved. And they have been doing their best to help. We've tried to check in with students here. Even during our shutdown, as counselors, we had daily open counseling time when students could pop in and you know, check in with us or get some personal counseling or get any kind of help or assistance that they need. Despite all the negatives, there is a silver lining. Mental health and its troubles are becoming more accepted. The hopeful side is people will say, you know what, people's emotions and their thoughts and their behaviors and what has happened to everybody in the last year is something we have to pay way more attention to. It has been a hard time for everyone. And with all the negatives, there are always ways to keep yourself positive. Stay active, stay positive, get your body moving. And let's just hope that, you know, as the as the months change, things get, are getting better and better and better. To make sure you're taking care of yourself, you know, making sure you're eating and sleeping and, you know, eating a healthy diet and things like that are going to help. And realizing that it is okay to ask for help, especially if things get really bad. Just talk to people. When you feel like doing something bad or like trying to harm yourself in any way, do something harmful, talk to someone. Tell them what you want to do and realize, it helps you realize that what you are going to do is going to be destructive. Coming out of the shutdown in December, we were given a new sense of hope for life going forward. Scientists were inching closer and closer to a potentially life-saving vaccine. They can uh, have the opportunity to get it. Uh, it's, it's For some of them, it's actually a lifesaver. And by the end of December, the first vaccine was approved, and the Trump Warp Speed project was successful. Just a few hours away in Kalamazoo, Michigan, the Pfizer vaccine started shipping across the country. It's actually really important. Uh, it's an antibody that our bodies are not provided. Uh, so by getting this vaccination, we're going to provide those antibodies for uh, your immune system to build and grow as the vaccination uh, enters into the body. However, the supply was a lot less than the demand for the vaccine. There was an extremely slow rollout, and by January 10th, there were only an average of 526,000 vaccinations a day in the country. But things changed when the Biden administration took over and rolled out a plan to vaccinate 100 million people in 100 days. Two more vaccines were approved and supply skyrocketed. And by March 10th, there was an average of 2.2 million people getting vaccinated a day in the U.S. And 100 million people were vaccinated in just 58 days. Trust with the organization of this whole um, feat. It's not easy to run one of these. The people have been amazing. Teachers and frontline workers were prioritized and clinics were held in Genesee County. So far, 440 teachers have gotten vaccinated district wide. Many people have high hopes for this vaccine. To be the answer to our questions and possibly end this pandemic that has taken many lives too soon. It's something that uh, it's going to make everybody feel a little bit more comfortable and uh, hopefully it's going to only improve and get better from here. As a teacher, I look at this and say, well done, A plus, and thank you for letting me get my shot today. As these vaccines were being distributed and cases throughout the country were slowing down, the glory of it all was overshadowed by what was going on in Davison. I think so.
one year into this pandemic, the story at Davison is completely different than what was expected. The virus wasn't going away. In fact, the numbers were almost the worst we have ever seen. The quarantine list spiked to 206 students in the high school and 20 active cases. Many classes were left deserted, and in many cases, only a handful of students were left. But face-to-face -face instruction rolled on anyway. And quarantine students worked online when possible. Spikes were being seen across the entire state due to restrictions getting lifted. And here at the high school, eager students spread the virus at parties and headed off to spring break. People are going to do what what they want to do. Um, you know, we do our best to give them all of the information, uh, put the warnings out there. Um, and you know, um, people have to live their lives and they're going to make their decisions based on what's best for them and their families. And uh, we'll be here when they get back, regardless of how that works out. By the end of March, Michigan had the worst COVID rates in the country. And for the first time, K-12 through students were the biggest source of outbreaks in the state. More than nursing homes and restaurants combined, with many of the cases coming from sports teams. Over 100 basketball teams decided to opt out of the MHSAA playoffs due to COVID concerns. Over the past 13 months alone, Davison has had to face the toughest challenge it has ever faced. And despite a global pandemic filled with so many starts and stops and life changes, students were still able to come to school, see their friends, play for championships, get out of the house, and learn. But it's not over. As cases rise and another school year comes to a close, things have come full circle. I know Michiganders have made extraordinary sacrifices over the past year. And I want to get back to normal as much as everyone else. I'm tired of this. And that's why I'm calling on high schools to voluntarily go remote for two weeks past spring break. I'm calling on youth sports to voluntarily suspend games and practices for two weeks. And I'm strongly encouraging all Michiganders to avoid dining indoors and avoid gathering with friends indoors for two weeks. The governor strongly recommended another shutdown, but most schools, including Davison, remained open. After all the struggles, changes, and uncertainty, the pandemic is still here. Schools may close, departments are overwhelmed, seniors are left wondering about graduation, and sports are still being canceled. Normal life remains on hold, and Davison continues to confront COVID. The hardest part about COVID for me was uh, just having COVID because uh, I got COVID around right when school started back up. So for me, I thought I was going to be able to go face to face and see all my friends again, but that wasn't the case. So it was kind of just hard waiting that whole semester just to be able to get back and see people again. When the pandemic first started and we first got that shutdown, the initial three weeks, uh, my cousin, Finley, she moved in with us for about a two to three month period because her mother was a co uh, correctional nurse. So she was working in the prison system with COVID patients. And after, you know, um, everything that happened with her and her family, her dad was not medically sound to take care of her on his own. So um, they came and lived with us for a good two to three months. A little tough, you know, not seeing your friends for a long period of time and just 
you know, not having a lot of human interaction besides your family for quite a long period of time. I got quarantined a lot through school too, so that was a nice. It affected both of us in many ways. The main one, having to do school virtually. It's, it's been kind of sucky, but we're getting through it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a learning curve compared to last year that was definitely not as like, vigorous as this one is. And it's a lot harder trying to teach yourself all these concepts when you're at home. Um, the hardest part has definitely been the mental part of it, just knowing that, especially with softball, last year we were going to have a very, very good team. I think we could have went far in playoffs. And it sucked that our season got completely canceled before we even got to start. 